area, but nothing structural. Um, the the Democrats are in favor of raising taxes, which which unless you get a whoa, she's talking about the Dem and the Rep. She was asked a question: impact of elections on fiscal policy, and according to Lynn Alden, very vice individual. What are the chances coming across her in on Kitco News, which is a 50-50 thing? A lot of stuff they put out there is kind of biased because the host, Michelle, like she's a pro BDC. And I like the fact that she asked a lot of BDC questions. So what do you think about this? And I'm going to summarize this whole thing for you in a second. All right. One minute, one hour, seven minutes, 47 seconds. I watched the entire stuff. And I felt like I was just a flounder in the Little Mermaid Ocean. So much to learn. And there was another individual I came across not too long ago. Both of their views align to some extent. And the words they put out there, I'm like, whoa, okay. All jargons flying around. I need to use AI to actually put them together and yeah, feed my brain. And again, if uh, I'm putting this for context, I did two videos, one on NFT and one on small business. I want to give you a little context. Those were my two previous videos. When I did the NFT videos, all right? A lot of you might think I'm an anti-crypto, anti- No, I'm anti-scam. I'm anti-grifters. It's not about like pro or like, you know, pro NFTs or against. No, it's about right and wrong. That's all. So uh, it's not about pro government, anti government. Oh, this guy is supporting SEC. And uh, no, I really don't care about SEC coming after OpenSea, whatnot. I, I can give two crap. Like, I really don't care. It just bothers me that most of them will use all the other tools, the, you know, sheepies as so called. The guinea pigs basically hey come support us SEC is coming against us oh my god SEC is coming against our guru lord we have to go protect them and this is the irony brian armstrong the ceo of coinbase congrats and welcome to the club i'm long wells notice companies yeah and then the, one of the comments then why have you been dumping your coin shares and buying real estate coinbase ceo brian armstrong bought that 133 million bel-air compound and yeah, well, why wouldn't he buy, right? Multi-billionaire can dump any tokens or whatnot. But here's the problem. NFT. Hey, man, it's a collectible. So you don't want your collectible value to go up, right? Your monkey JPEG to go up. Okay, because if you are expecting to profit from it, it does it become a security or what? I, I don't know. Hey, I don't know. I'm just questioning. I'm not anti-NFT. I love NFTs. I love the blockchain, the technology, whatnot. But unfortunately, people behind it, 99% are crooks. I'm against those. That's the problem. So clean the mess, bring the good dudes, and that's it. I'm a total pro crypto man. I just want to clean up this place, like the whole space. And I can't do it myself. All I can do is put my voice out there and maybe people who have had a position, has the power, will do some good stuff. What are the chances? The so-called creators, they sell you the so-called NFTs, the JPEG, you're holding it, and they take those tokens, they take that and convert to USD, whatever gold, silver, and they buy mansions like this in Bel Air compound. And you're just holding JPEGs and you're supporting them. Yeah, how do you, how, what, what's the deal? I don't understand. You'll make it. All right, anyways, I was just speaking to those who have like total clueless and supporting the wrong and thinking like, ah, I'm an anti-crypto. Anti no, I'm not. I'm total pro wealth accumulation in every possible way. All right, in the right real way. So I just wanted to put this out there. And of course, this is what the whales don't want you to see. Trading is a zero-sum PvP game, and the goal is to completely liquid the opponents. So they are always watching. That's all. So now, I have to give this context. And I also mentioned about the election. Whoever comes in position might not be able to do much. And according to Lynn Alden, when she was also asked, she literally said, 20%, they might be able to do some stuff in terms of unrealized gains and all that. They can, they'll have some effect. 80% is already put into the system, damage has been done, 80%. So whoever comes will still print, one is just less evil than the other. Now you do whatever with this information. You get the point? So the power is in, in your hands, population, us. So go and make the right choice, vote for the right dudes, or that's it, all right? Pretty sweeping win seems somewhat unlikely. Hear this up. There are some taxes that tax cuts that were done under the Trump administration that are set to expire in 2025. Um, they're not huge around the margins, but they are meaningful. Um, and so I think that's that's one of the levers that's probably relevant based on the election outcome, that, that that's kind of locked in unless um, you know you get certain outcomes. So it's not that the election doesn't matter fiscally. Uh, it's just that 
you know, the, it's, you know, I think many investors may be over indexed to how much that matters compared to how much is, is accumulated over the past several decades and then pretty much locked in politically, especially because the, the voter base is the ones that generally receive Social Security and, and Medicare and, and there's really little appetite to cut the military. So I think a lot of it's locked in. Okay. So a fiscal dominance locked in more or less regardless of uh, who. Here is up. Pretty interesting stuff. Wins the election. You're ultimately seeing a controlled rate cut, but that the economy will be largely desensitized to it in terms of real terms. Um, let's talk about what this means, though, for investors. In your newsletter, you mentioned the three-pillar portfolio strategy, stocks for disinflationary growth, cash bonds protection against liquidity contractions, and commodities, hard assets protection against inflation and the currency debasement. Break that down for us. And uh, let's start off with, with the commodities grouping gold and Bitcoin into that category. <laughs> she always mentioned gold and Bitcoin. I want to see before we move forward, okay, right now. And he said, uh, she said, there's chances. BDC go six figure in 18 months. And what are the chances if it doesn't go? Like the reasoning behind it. And it totally makes sense. BDC right now is sitting at 59,290. All right. And gold right now, if you look, look at this. Go gold is literally breaking all time highs. And BDC right now, again, is... I just showed you it's at 59 something so this is the all-time high 73 almost 74 74 almost yeah look at this so that's what it is all right so pro bdc pro gold i don't know about the rest of the cryptocurrency yeah that that gives uh, a portfolio inflation protection and so it actually helps to kind of clarify what the 60 40 portfolio does first 60, which is to say portfolio. that the classic 60 40 portfolio uh, especially one that's you know just inherently u.s equities and then u.s bonds um that's a portfolio that's very weighted toward disinflation Right, so it, it generally, you know, stocks benefit from disinflationary growth, uh, and then bonds benefit from, you know, disinflationary recessions and things like that. Um, whereas the 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 decades where both stocks and bonds do rather poorly, uh, especially in real terms and sometimes in nominally terms, is when you have decades of inflation. So whether you look at the 1910s, the 1940s, the 1970s, or the 2000s, those were kind of the four uh, inflationary decades of the modern era. Um, all of those were ones where the, a combined stock and bond portfolio was not a particularly good one in real terms. And what did do well was that third component, which is some combination of commodities, commodity producers, especially gold. energy producers, um, ideally gold, uh, you know, kind of hard money. In the modern era, that can include Bitcoin. Uh, basically having that kind of- Also could include Bitcoin. Um, that more inflation- You get the point. And Dynamic asked about the future of the BDC here. Expect good equity growth. Um, then that's kind of a case to just, you know, you can own equities. You can own, you know, those types of assets. But if you do expect- um, long-term currency debasement um, and kind of, you know, risks from all this kind of policy materializing. Um, that's where assets like gold and Bitcoin and things like energy producers uh, can, can come in really handy for a portfolio. Simple as that. Simple as that. Gold and Bitcoin. Now I have to break down all the other currency that's hardcore. Now, since I mentioned that I'm going to summarize it, right? Let's do it. All right. And please pay attention. In this video, Lynn Alden, a respected macroeconomic analyst, discusses the potential impacts of the Federal Reserve's anticipated rate cuts. Alden explains how these cuts could lead to capital shifts away from U.S. equities and into global markets. She also addresses U.S. labor market revisions, the Fed's dual mandate, inflation and employment, and the broader economic outlook for assets like gold, Bitcoin, and emerging markets. Key points. Rate cuts and capital rotation. Alden suggests that upcoming Fed rate cuts will trigger significant capital movements from U.S. equities particularly large cap, low volatility stocks into other global markets. With foreign equity holders potentially pulling out from the US, capital could flow into emerging markets where there may be greater growth potential. So if liquidity goes from US to other, what happens? In the uh, Bitcoin is global, but I'm talking about the US stock market. So that's why I said the same thing. If in during recession and stuff, um, time, gold and still, um, precious metals, commodities and uh, Bitcoin. All right. Number two, labor market revisions. The Bureau of Labor Statistics revised down the number of jobs created in the U.S. by 88,000, marking the largest division since 2009. This adjustment shows the labor market is weaker than previously thought. Alan explains that this labor market weakness, along with the rising unemployment rate, has pressured the Fed to focus more on supporting employment than controlling inflation. Impact on U.S. economy. Alden argues that the U.S. economy has become desens desensitized to interest rate cuts. She believes that the cuts will have a limited impact in boosting economic growth in the current business cycle. 
This is very important. All right? You hear this? The rate cuts in, will have a limited impact in boosting economic growth in the current business cycle. However, these cuts might trigger a shift in capital from the U.S. to other regions, which could provide opportunities for investors looking outside U.S. borders. Wow. Number four, long-term projections for gold and Bitcoin. When she was asked this question, Alden maintains a bullish stance on Bitcoin and gold over the next 18 months, particularly as global markets adjust to these monetary policy changes. She highlights how rate cuts might diminish the U.S. dollar's dominance, providing more room for alternative assets like Bitcoin to grow. Makes totally sense. She mentioned about the liquidity. If there's more liquidity that floods the system, then there's more chances of Bitcoin to go up. And she that was her point. That in 18 months, she can see the Bitcoin to go to six figure, six figure, 100,000 maybe. I mean, it's not that far from 100,000. I mean, that's like not significant high. It was at 74,000. So from 74 to 100, it's not like significant high. I can see it go to 100K, honestly. But I cannot see that further 200, 300, whatever, because that will require a massive amount of dollar in the system. And that means the dollar is going down. Like, oh my God, it's like paper value. You get the point. So I do agree with what she mentioned. And for um, metal, for gold, retail, Americans, maybe it's not, um, you know, what do you call it? V, Gen Z's, they are not used to the gold and metal culture, whatever. So who's buying gold? Asian market, Asian cultures. And that's real. So totally makes sense, right? Because Bitcoin is a global thing. And anyways, cutting that aside. Well, putting that aside, not cutting that out. The Fed's alternative assets like Bitcoin to grow. The Fed's dual mandate and the dilemma. The Federal Reserve's dual mandate to control inflation and maintain employment has led to dilemma, with rising unemployment becoming a growing concern. Although inflation is moderating, Alden points out that the Fed is wary of further unemployment increases, prompting them to consider rate cuts as a balancing act. See this? This last part here? So expecting more unemployment and then more rate cuts because of that. And what happens then? Rate cuts are... Hap rate cuts happen because the economy is going down the drain. U.S. fiscal and sovereign debt challenges. Alden also delves into the U.S. fiscal challenges, emphasizing rising sovereign debt levels. She warns that these growing debt burdens could further weaken the U.S. dollar and make it more difficult for the country to manage its finances without significant inflation or further devaluation. This is wild, and you've been hearing this for quite some time. All right, A lot of others talking about this. I also mentioned this several times. Printing, 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 the debt, 35, whatever trillion, is just keep going up and up and up. It's not going to stop. It's going to keep going up. What is the solution? Important pointers. Global capital shift. Investors should prepare for potential capital flows away from U.S. equities into emerging markets or global stocks as rate cuts take effect. I mean, that's not the best news for U.S. people, I guess. Diversification into non-U.S. markets may provide better returns in a low-rate environment. I mean, you could still invest in other markets. I'm not too sure about the ticker, the ETFs, that hold other global um, in a bucket, the other stocks. So saying, basically, money is going to flow from U.S. to the other side. Understanding the labor market. The revision of U.S. job data highlights the importance of analyzing deeper economic indicators beyond the surface level figures. Investors should be aware of the implications of labor market weakness on monetary policy. Number three, bullish on Bitcoin and gold. Alden's bullish outlook on Bitcoin and gold reflects a broader trend to her alternate no, alternative assets. As the US dollar weakens, investors might want to consider these assets as part of a diversified portfolio. Number four, Fed's tightrope act. The Fed's balancing act between inflation and unemployment suggests that Fed rate cuts might not have the desired stimulating effect on the US economy. Investors should remain curious, cautious about US equity performance. So it's not the bull, bear, whatever. It's like, oh, rate cuts coming, everything's gonna moon. I mean, if you look at NVIDIA today, right? They beat expectations by a tiny amount, whatever, yet the stock is not performing. So, yep, there you go. Watch emerging markets. As Alden suggests, emerging markets could become more attractive for investors, especially if capital moves away from U.S. equities. Keep an eye on countries with strong growth potential. Countries. Conclusion. Lynn, Lynn Alden provides a detailed analysis of how upcoming rate cuts may impact both the U.S. economy and global markets. While the U.S. may not see significant benefits, from these cuts, there could be opportunities abroad, particularly, particularly in emerging markets and alternative assets like Bitcoin and gold. Investors should consider diversifying their portfolios as a global financial landscape adjusts to these changes. That's wild. 
And I wanted to put this out there because all these pointers are extremely important and makes total sense to me, right? You're like, oh, I'm not the smartest person. I try to follow the smartest people and analyze them, use my tools and all that, and then just bring it to you. And that also helps me. Whatever I'm putting, this is something I would give it to you. I give it to my family to learn and stuff. The dudes who are feeding you the NFTs, ask them, you're going to sell this NFT to your kids, to your grandkids, to your grandpa? If yes, then okay, I'll buy from you. But they're not going to do that. They literally will sell you everything and they'll tell your kids, hey, what are you, you bought an NFT? Never buy NFTs, okay? Dad, but you just co-founded and made billions from NFTs. Yeah, that, that was past. Things change, things change. Never said that again. Yeah, that's that's the problem. Anyways, hypocrites, right? Sad story. Anyways, listen. Before I end, again, I would really, really, really appreciate if you could hit that subscribe button, all right? And maybe turn on the notifications. So whenever I go online, I can give my wisdom. We can share wisdom together and learn something. And uh, yeah, criticize the scammers and bad dudes, all right? Report them maybe. And if you don't like my content, let me know in the comment why. And if you're lazy, it's okay. Just hit the emoji button and just hit the send button and that's it. Okay? And I'll see you in the next vid. Peace for now.